now that we've brought up these unrestricted free agents, we kind of have to look at this draft and next year's draft as being super important, especially now that they're getting the first round picks back. Not only are players getting older, you know, you can look at guys like Kittle, CMC, who I know that he's only 28, but that's usually when the, the bottom starts to fall out a little bit on running backs. Trent Williams, we discussed. We talked about how almost every player in the secondary, other than Jair Brown, is going to be a free agent. So how do the 49ers future proof? Like, what are the air, most pressing needs in this draft? What are the players or position groups that they need to figure out and say, hey, we may have some weaknesses going forward into next year. It's not just about this year. What types of players and position groups do they need to be looking at in this draft, in your opinion? I think that's a you know a very good question and one the Niners probably have to contemplate, especially having a first round pick. I think this also highlights how bad the last two draft classes were for the Niners. Where if you look at that 2023 class where Brock Purdy really was the only guy to right now have a significant impact, Jair Brown was, uh, or sorry, the 2022 class where Brock Purdy really is the only guy where you had a significant impact. Yes, no first round pick hurts you there, but you'd hope to have a little bit more out of that draft class. 2023, Jair Brown looks solid, but if you're looking at an initial, uh, you know, if you're looking at the initial impact, Cameron Latu was a red shirt as a as your second or third highest overall pick. Jake Moody, average to below average, se- well, below average season for a kicker. And that's a position where you don't really want to see development. You're you're not rely- relying on the development as much. And so this makes this draft even more crucial because you might need some starters as soon as next year, but you might need high-end starters to replace the high-end guys that you might be losing. I think the position everyone looks at is offensive tackle because of how this draft is. Offensive tackle, it's a significant group in the first round where as many as nine players could be considered as first round selections uh, as an offensive tackle with even more, you know, on the interior. But I think the offensive line as a whole, because like you said, if Trent retires, how much, how, how, will, how much are you relying on whoever else is remaining at the offensive line? Trent Williams is the reason this group is average to above average. You know, this group significantly decreases without a guy like Trent Williams. You might want to improve the remainder of that group. I think secondary is also a position where you might have to understand you might lose one of your top two guys. You might need to replace one of your top two guys. And then the position I'll also throw out there is receiver because we we're talking about Brandon Ayuk. I personally believe he gets extended, but Jawan Jennings is a free agent next year. Seems like he could get a good deal on the open market with the way receiver contracts are going, especially for a guy of his, you know, of his caliber. And then Debo Samuel could be potentially traded as a cat salary cap relief type of move um, with him obviously having a $24 million cap hit next year. That might mean you might need, you know, one to two guys to potentially step into those roles and ha- have an impact in 2025. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's interesting because offensive line is what's talked about a ton, but, when I started looking at the secondary, I said, hold on a second. So literally all three starting corners, at least as of now, right? we don't know if, if Ambry Thomas or Isaac Yadam, I assume one of them is going to be starting outside opposite of Ward. I assume Lenore is going to be starting as, as your nickel or your slot corner. So all three corners are going to be free agents. Then you've got Hafunga who's going to be a free agent. Really, it's Jair Brown. So four-fifths of that secondary is going to be free agents as of now yeah. next year. So all of a sudden you lo- you're looking at the secondary and saying, "Wow, I mean, that might be m- just as if not more crucial than the offensive line as far as future proof in this team." And if you get a really good corner early in this draft that can start right away, you've already upgraded a starting spot to where I look at the offensive line and say, "Okay, we all want offensive linemen." But what's the chance that one of these guys is going to come in right away and take a starting job? I don't know. I mean, that might be a little far-fetched. So I think secondary is going to be one. But let me ask you this. The 49ers haven't had maybe the best drafts the last couple of years. On the surface, looking at last year's draft, not a lot of people contributed. But they did draft two tight ends, which is a position of need still. They did draft two linebackers, which future proofing is a position of need. They drafted Mm -hmm. another young wide receiver. They drafted another corner. Out of the players they drafted last year, could you see any of those guys potentially taking a leap in year two and and kind of helping solve the issue at hand here? All right, Brother Bob says, who wouldn't want to play for Kyle Levy? 
Super Bowl winners. All right. All right. Okay. Brother Bob also says, Rohan, B100, will Kyle Levy ever win a Super Bowl with the Niners? Okay, well, I've got to save that one for when he comes back. So we'll leave that there. What's good, TC? What's good? Okay, well, while we're waiting for Rohan, I guess I'll give my answer. I, I do. I, I think that they're... I don't want to completely write off Willis. I think that there's an opportunity that he could be maybe a tight end two in this league. I know that the 49ers tend to look for pass blocking tight ends or run blocking tight ends, just blocking tight ends in general to pair up with Kittle. But the end is near for Kittle. He's not going to be playing forever. They need to find somebody that can be a receiver as well. Preferably, you would get a guy that can do both like Kittle can. I'm not saying Willis is going to be amazing necessarily, but I think he can be decent in this league. I do think he can be a tight end number two in this league potentially, but really the guy for me that I think might help future proof things. We talked about the linebacker position. Rohan himself said that he would maybe bring back Dre Greenlaw if he's future proofing this team out of the three players that he would bring back. I wouldn't bring back Greenlaw. One, I don't know how he's going to perform off the injury. And I'm not saying I wouldn't bring him back at all, but I'm saying right now, if I had to sign three guys, Greenlaw wouldn't be on that list. And it, it, the injury is one of them, but also I really believe in Jalen Graham. I think he's going to be a, a very good player in this league. Maybe I'm completely off. It's not like I, I think I'm great at evaluating talent at the linebacker position, but man, when I look at all the boxes he checks for the 49ers, You've got Fred Warner, who was a safety, converted to linebacker. You've got Greenlaw, who was a safety, converted to linebacker. Jalen Graham, safety, converted to linebacker. You watch him play during training camp. He's a very headsy player. He got his hands on the ball almost every practice, it seemed like. He was always near the football. Had himself a nice pick that I can remember on Brock Purdy during training camp last year. and. He did a great job in the one-on-one -on -one drills, drills that are designed to make the offensive player be highlighted. So when I look at all of those things, I think Jalen Graham can be a very crucial player for the San Francisco 49ers as they are building going forward. So that's who I was going to bring up as a player that is on this roster now that we could be future proofing the roster with. I, I think he's a player that can help them out and still be productive going forward that maybe hasn't been productive yet and alleviate some of the draft capital this year, maybe the where they don't have to spend it on a linebacker because he can help fill that need. But make no mistake about it, the San Francisco 49ers have a lot of holes on this roster going forward with the 39 unrestricted free agents doesn't mean they can't bring some of these guys back, but it's going to be tough to bring back a majority of them just because of the salary cap situation. So hopefully a guy like Willis or Graham can kind of step up and help them future proof this roster.